All right. Welcome, everybody. This is the 30s Perspective. Hey. <laughs> I need a new dance. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So today we're going to be talking about Black businesses. That's what we're going to be talking about. Um, but before we do that, we got to get into our icebreaker. Brandon, what's our icebreaker? So, so well, first of all, sure we know who, who, who's on the line here. We got Alicia, we got Los, we got Sherelle Unique, me, B. Mike. We're here. We're first perspective. And before we get started, I definitely want to make sure I congratulate Alicia on your marriage. You just got married. She's had a wedding. Thank you. She did it with married, all of the nuptials. She did the nuptials yeah. on this <laughs> past weekend. That's great. Hey, yes. She ain't Black Alicia Black. Terrell no more. She's I'm Alicia not. Page. I am. I <laughs> am. All right. Beautiful wedding. Beautiful, Thank beautiful you. wedding. Thank you. Cool. All right, so the icebreaker. Actually, we can set play fire. Anyways, icebreaker. Y'all know about it. It's been everywhere. The new video came out. New song came out with Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, that WAP. And it's been it's been the humongous controversy. It's been the over. Time. It's been this whole thing, and I don't I don't I don't quite get it. I'm 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 probably not in the majority with this. Well, let's get started. All right, we're gonna start here. Sherelle, what is your initial reaction when you saw the video? Well, let's let's be let's rewind a little bit. First, what? do you we gotta ask, do you like the song? We gotta start. Okay, with that, that's your initial reaction. Did you like it? Did you did you you first heard and saw it mansions and squirting titties and you said what? So okay, so personally I like the song. Um <laughs> I knew it. I knew you was gonna like it. You know I like the song. Um, I mean, when I was a teenager, like, uh, when I was a teenager, once we started going to the clubs and stuff, the teen clubs, my friends would be listening to Kaya. Uh, we'd be listening to Karina. We'd be like, it listening to Little Kim on the way to the club. And so, how um, many licks? Yeah, like we was listening to all the what ratchet stuff. Um, right. So Yo. like it would it, it it's I associate it with like my party side. Um, so I do like the song. The video is visually interesting. It's real cool. The looks are the looks are dope. The uh, dancing is dope. Um, so yeah, I do like the song. I do like the video. However, 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 it's always a but. There is always a but. There, there is in this video. <laughs> Lots of but. Lots of but. Okay. Um, I feel like they pushed the envelope. It's not even like they burnt the dang <laughs> envelope. They was not worried about the envelope at all. Man. I just feel like, do you think that they really burned the envelope with this? No, thing? they didn't burn the envelope. For, for the music video, I feel like they did. But I will I say this. I feel like they did it all. I, I enjoyed don't like it. it at all. You didn't see the tip drill video, huh? When with Nelly, the, un, the well, uncut here's the version. Thing. Here's the thing. I don't think the controversy comes because people have never seen other stuff. That's bad. I don't think the controversy comes from that. Clearly, there's tip drill. Clearly, there's Uchi Wally. Clearly, there's other stuff that's just as my bad. Neck. Right? My neck. My back. back. Lick my... You we can say it on this show. <laughs> We know that there's stuff just as bad as this song. I think what there, there's a couple things that is the issue. This is what I think. Um, one, I think with the climate we're in, Black Lives Matter movement, George Floyd, all that stuff, I think we kind of just wanted something different from them. We kind of want it as women, and I'm just speaking in general, because um, I've had a couple of my friends and a couple of people talk about how they just wish it would have been on some female empowerment type stuff more like okay I'm like with Savage you you're like I'm a savage I'm I'm classy I'm ratchet I'm bossy like we want it classy bossy we want it something maybe even more hood we we just I think we're starting to get a little tired of this same narrative um, yeah, and but... so I think for me, like, that's where the controversy comes in. And I think 
I'm like, just kind of like, dang, y'all ain't tired of putting your butt cheeks in the in the camera? Like, come on, give me a. Oh, that's the circle. So that's how I feel. <laughs> that's why I feel like the controversy well, comes in. Is just- my whole thing to to kind of gear it in a different direction. I kind of feel that like. That's what's wrong with us black women is that we feel like we always have to be put in a box. We always feel like we have to be that, you know, we always have to wear different hats. We always have to wear the classy, bougie, and ratchet. Like we always have to wear those hats. But like when we want to express ourselves and just be ourselves, who we are, like, you know, we have beautiful bodies and, you know, exotic we have exotic, beautiful bodies. So I don't understand why it's a thing for, why we always have to feel like we have to hold back whenever we do things like this or we get all this, you know, controversy whenever we talk about ourselves like this and we sexualize ourselves because men sexualize us all the time. But when we do it to ourselves, it almost, like people always kind of come at us crazy because it's like, you know, I'm com- like, they're comfortable in the skin that they're in. I'm kind of comfortable in my skin. But anyway, they're comfortable in the skin they're in. And that's why I feel like when they pushed the envelope, I liked it. I liked that, you know, they can feel comfortable as confident, beautiful, Black and Puerto Rican. Is she Puerto Rican? Is she Puerto Rican? Dominican? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know which but one she is. She's Let's just say, say Black and Brown. Let's just say Black and yeah. Brown black and brown women so i just i i i applaud them is is it is it kind of ratchy and kind of raunchy and kind of i mean it's raunchy and you know but i kind of like it i kind of all right all right so she likes the video sherelle likes the song all right los before i talk about this go ahead I guess I was I was unmoved. I really didn't think. I mean, cause we y'all yeah, hear that one song. My pussy talk English, Spanish, and French. <laughs> <laughs> like this, this, exactly. Like this sounds like this for like I, I was just completely unmoved. Like I don't I don't respect. I don't I don't hold them. I'm not gonna say respect. I don't hold Nick uh, Meg Thee Stallion and. Cardi B to some standard of uh, I don't know high snobbery or highbrow rap lyrics. You know what I mean? Like I don't I don't expect right. them to say anything that's going to be Other than what they say prolific. Like like they just they made a brand. Their whole brand is made off of what that ass do, what that mouth do. So exactly like, like I'm the one who expects something right. different. Right. <laughs> I mean, right. and like, like you, and like I think somebody already said, like Meg, Meg gave us her best effort with Savage. Yeah, you know I mean, and that wasn't even if you dissect those lyrics, it wasn't. If 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 somebody said, "Give this to your daughter," she, this will be empowering. I'd be like, "Nah, <laughs> like I'm not giving her the Savage song. I'm like, why would I do that?" <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But it, what they what they were saying, because it's like you know, we as women, we wear different hats. We classy, bougie, ratchet. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I just feel like it was like a sex sales type of thing. It's mm-hmm. like it's almost to me. It was just kind of like that moment when your two favorite wrestlers tag team. You know what I mean? Or like right. when you see, yeah. like I don't know, when when you see two action stars in the same movie, like. <laughs> these are actually yeah. Stars. These are the up. black female them. tango and cash. <laughs> annoyed because I was like, I was a little annoyed because I was just like, oh, the sex sales gimmick. Come on, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's what it's doing. Not to say that they 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 give much different anyway. Mm-hmm. I do think that Meg Meg is a real writer and she's a real rapper for real, like. And so I do think that Meg has the ability to do more than this. And maybe she'll cross over. I don't know. Um, I don't know. But I mean, in my ratchet go, bag, when I'm ready to party, this is something I'd be dancing to, you know? Mm, yeah. It or ain't something I want to listen to all the time, though. 
Mm-hmm. And if I want to go work out, that's the type of music I like listening to. Yeah. Something that's yeah. going to get me like, hey. Yeah, you want that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, nah, I think I think what they did was, like, like Lo said, it's perfect for who they are. It, they're not doing anything mm-hmm. other than who they are. I think we just weren't ready. Like, we weren't, because um, what were we what? listening to? I feel like, what were we listening to before? I don't know. We hadn't had, we hadn't had no super raunchy right at, uh, in that, in this moment right now. Like, we just hadn't had nothing super raunchy come out in a little bit. I don't it's the know. summertime, it's too. It's August. It's supposed it's to be right. raunchy. They're late. I'm it should have came out with this back in June. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's why not. It's so I just hard. think it kind of caught us off guard because we wasn't ready. He was like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Everything was on. But I mean, they, we we had this. We had one version like this in our generation. Remember, uh, remember when uh, Little Kim and um and Missy Elliott did that? Rick, Rick, or was that or was that Trina? What's that one? Minute Man. Right. Yeah, so one Minute Man. Right. So I was about to bring it up. Yo, I was about to bring that up because I was not impressed with the visuals of the video that much because to me it looks almost. Very similar to One Minute Man by Missy Elliott. So you're telling me in 15 years they couldn't have come up with something more creative visually than I that? I remember a Minute Man. Oh, wait, video. I'm going to go back to it. That video was classic. But wait. Yeah. My, but Brandon, you remember we yeah. just had this conversation. Yeah. We just had this conversation about how, you know, these female rappers, like, it's like it, they're not evolving. Like, it's like they, they're like yep. the same across yeah. the board. Like everything about them, it's like everybody is trying to be like the last rapper was instead of being their own individual yeah. original. And it's like things up. froze. But I think that's part of the problem too, and part of uh, the controversy as well. Like I said, it's not about us not having heard songs that's like this, but there's an oversaturation. In the past, we had Missy, we had Lauren, we had uh, shoot. Latifa, we had Kim, we had Trina. So like we had options of what to listen to. If, but if all I'm those artists sexy, have sex songs. If I'm feeling sexy, I could listen to this. If I'm feeling hood, I could listen to this. We had options. Now it's an oversaturation of this one style and, and these young girls are really honestly, they don't have enough of an option of who they can be. If, if, they, if they were really like solely Oh. Watching the media, they don't have enough things that they could look at to be like, oh, I want to be like, I'm more like her. It's See, all at just- the same time, though, they have an endless amount of sources and options that they look for. There are, well, we just talked about what's, what's her name? Um, the one, the, the now I'm blanking, you know, because I, I remember I was asking who, who are the more conscious rappers right now that's out. I mean- I love Rhapsody, but we don't get Rhapsody. to see the, it's, the it's the industry. We don't get to see her. If we ask the kid of to name a, a conscious rapper, they couldn't name one. But that's because they hadn't. They didn't go look for it. Why would they? It's not advertised. It's not advertised. I'm sorry, so that's, but I think that's part of the problem. The three top, the ones that are in the the media the most, are the same person. Literally, they they're are. different. Cardi, Megan, and Nikki. They are three of the same people. <laughs> and now we got Doja, and Doja is the same person too. I like Doja. Boom. It's the same person. Yeah, but all right, all right. So musically, we notice when a sound gets hot, the industry makes photocopies of that person and throws them out. So Nikki was hot, and the industry made photocopies, and now they're throwing them out. The same, the same thing always happens that way. I mean, I don't know how much y'all into this. It didn't used to happen that way. And it did. When we used to listen to the radio with us growing up. We had, if you listen to that music, all of it was different. I know. All right. What I mean by photocopies, man, think about this, though. When Boys and Men came out and they was hot, right? All of a sudden, there were all these black, like, boy band groups. These Joe C's and Shies and Air Jets. They were just trying to crank those out. In the mm-hmm. 80s, the hair metal bands, man, as soon as it's like, you know, the hair metal became a big thing. There was like 50 hair metal bands that came out, all looking and sounding very similar or the same. They just knew, mm-hmm. what, it's a hot sound, and we're going to just crank it out. We're going to do the same thing. Yeah, but groups were, groups were big, but I also think that that 
you know, at the time when, you know, boy bands and girl bands and all those became, you know, popular with, like, you could name so many all within, like, you know, we, we could go black or white. We could go uh -huh. back, we could go black street, we could go in sync, we could go boys yep. to men, we could go, you know what I mean, Hanson, we could go all those, like, we, we but... As soon as one becomes hot, they just photo it's like, that's what y'all want? Right. All right, we're just going to crank that out for a while so y'all get tired of it. And then it was like, okay, and then er, then people started going like solo, and then yeah. had solos. Like, even uh -huh. like Destiny's Child, like when Destiny's Child, they was hot. Like, at the hottest point of them, that's when... Yep. You know, Beyonce was like, "No, nah, I'm good. I'm gonna do my own thing." <laughs> right, and then and wait, and then all the lead singers started dropping their groups. Justin Timberlake right. dropped his group. Everybody started. Oh, I'm gonna go solo. Think wait, think about when the Migos came out. The Migos came out and they did the triplet rhyme scheme over the beat, and then everybody sounded the same after that. And that's what the I think that's what the problem is. We're tired of the Yo, same old. Right, y'all remember when T Pain came out with with that um. We can call it that that acoustics, and then it was yeah. like auto everybody tone. had acoustics. Everybody <laughs> had acoustics, auto right? You know, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. When the yeah. franchise boys and D. Pharrell came out with snap music, now then there are like twenty other rappers on snap music. It just they just yeah. crank them out I that way. You, but it's like you know, but every I think I think what it is is that because they're so close together and like. You know they're pumping out the same music. You're literally listening yeah. to the same music. Where like, you know, it was almost like you know when we were growing up, it was, it it was, but it was it was like black versus white. Like who could be bigger? Like you know, in sync and and Backstreet Boys, and then it was like, you know. Well, oh, I'm what? sure there's gonna be some Iggy Azalea type chick coming out soon. Yeah. Doing the same thing. When when it comes to R and B, like the whole like chip chip What's her name? sound is a What's is her name? Theme. The one that was on um Dr. Phil. What's her name? You know, catch me outside. How about that? Oh, oh bad she's baby. trying to become an up and coming white rapper. What's her name? Yeah, bad baby. Bad yeah, baby. what the hell her name is. She need to go take several seats. That's what she I, needs to do. I'm not listening to that at all when it comes out. All right. Uh, What's next, people? Brandon? All right, so right, part of this was this, man. You know, because some some women are feeling that this song is kind of like sexual liberation and empowering. So I want to know y'all thoughts on that and the whole WAP thing. Is that like a uh, ego for y'all? Because you know, like what guys, you know, having the big dick thing is an ego thing. Is having a WAP an ego thing for women? Is that something y'all like? I mean, they're bragging about it, but I'm asking in general: is that part of the female culture in America? It depends on the woman. Um, it, it, it depends on the woman. Some people really pride themselves on having a wop. Like, that's that's their goal in life. Like, the ratchets, that's what they want in life. Like, I got a wop. <laughs> and, you know, you posted it online and, to, to letting everybody know indirectly that you got a wop. Like, you know, <sighs> if you ain't got nothing else to offer, then to me, I it in. I just, I don't know. Like for me, that's just that's just. I don't. I don't know. I can't compare that to to a big or little. I can't compare the two because it's just. I don't hear too many females talking about that because that's this personal for a lot of females. And if you're not. You getting talked about not only from females but males too like you know what i mean just like females females we are so catty when it comes to things that a lot of us don't talk about a lot of things like with other females like it's it's that's we it's hard to say but like it's hard for me to explain what i mean You're right, i you feel like if you have a um i feel like you having a wop is really um it's really <laughs> funny. Yeah, funny. Yeah. What's funny? Yeah. I was curious. What's funny? I, I think it's just like the way that you're saying it. You having a walk is up to the dudes you're dealing with. 
He should make sure that you <laughs> have no, a body. I, I was literally about to come in and say that. If I throw you years on this earth, I have never. Yes. I thought I thought all oh, pussy was what was they they make a dry one. When the God yes. make dry pussy? There are there are, are women who are dry. <laughs> Naturally there are dry. Women who are dry. All right, yeah. So like there is like right. hold on, well, there is a medical con- situation condition <laughs> that yeah. That, that's Especially the thing. women who are like the menopause, they have a gap. Okay, women can, I, can I say this? I, I've dealt with women that was probably wetter and women that was maybe not as wet, but yeah. I remember I talked to one girl, she she might have been giving me some false information, but you know, like when you a dude, right, sometimes you be you be trying to say some silver stuff. You be, you be trying to say some fly cash money stuff, you know what I mean? And one thing you might ask yourself if you're a dude for an ego check, I don't know, Brandon, if you ever did this, but you might ask, you might ask Shorty, like, do I, do I got your pussy wet right now? The shit I'm saying? Of course you got to do right. the quality control check. And she, she literally said, like, what, she, her, her, her comeback verbatim is what pussy ain't wet. Like, your pussy's wet all day. That's, that's what a, that's what a. No, wait, is. no, dude. If it's wet all day, you might need to get <laughs> that checked out. Like, it's, like no, it's, okay, it's, it's, okay, wait. It's we, not we just, know, but the canal, the canal ain't sitting up there dry all day. Like it's it's lubricated. Nah, no, but I mean, <laughs> all right. There's a difference. Okay, so yeah. the, there's the definitely a difference. Is, the, yeah, there's a difference because the question is, okay, what you're saying, Los, is is correct. Right. It is. It's wet all day. But, is it, but well, what type of wet are we talking about here? What type of wet are we talking about? Is it wet enough for for to have? Because to if get you leaking, you... if you're leaking, then you need to be leaking. Like so wet, she leaking. So wet. I think it's time to go to the OBGYN. Shake it like a salt shaker. Little light marks in your underwear. Then, then you got some issues that you need to I take think, care of. She, I and think I, she was talking about it in a healthy way. She was, she was well, talking yeah. about it in a healthy way. Well, we all there's, there's, levels to, there's definitely levels to this. There's levels yeah. to this. So you oh, are there's going levels. Yeah. Health is what all day, but whenever you're getting ready to throw up, you salivate more. <laughs> right. Are you not? Alicia, if she was making an ejaculation joke. Right. <laughs> no, but what Horrible. I'm saying, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is your mouth is wet all day long, but if yeah. you get the urge to throw up, your mouth starts salivating even more yeah. to the point where, like, you're you're over salivating. That's the same thing with. Yeah. You know, so when a pussy squirt, it's just a pussy throwing up. I got you. Right. So when we get excited, <laughs> things start flowing. Right. Sometimes uh, they overflow. Yeah. So I think she, like, she was, was well. in her in her way. She was trying to tell me to pipe down because she was annoyed that I was asking that. But it was just like it kind of just gave me a better understanding of just the inner workings in general. Like dry ass pussy. Like I never who 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 are these women? And then allow somebody. me to give you allow me to give you a second opinion. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Be surprised that our medical conditions. <laughs> but hold up, like, but it might be a, the same insult though. But dudes like me, pussy dry, and that's the same thing. A woman say you got a tiny dick. I don't know if that mm. goes together. No, I mean, I, honestly, if you're with a woman and 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 she and her pussy's dry, you better be careful because she might have something. That's uh. about one of the, those are reasons why things go dry because she well, might have too- something. It's two. It's two. Two reasons. There could be a problem of some sort. Two reasons. Stop it. There could be a problem yes. of some yes. sort. Or, <laughs> or he's not getting her there. Like right. she's yeah. uninterested. She's distracted. Like she either uh-huh. got a problem or going on, a or small. he's not. And it's not. He, it ain't performing. Yeah. No. It ain't performing. <laughs> no, he's not though, because before he even get to the small. There's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of work before then. But the small, right, right. Because the small release don't have yeah. nothing to do with yeah. how wet she might be. Back me up when I say this. Some men <laughs> don't know how to treat the woman downstairs. Yeah, for sure. See? They, like they are too rough. Because they were sheltered when they were younger. <laughs> so rough. 
Brandon, and stop. it'll take direction. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so I don't know how to. Whenever you don't know how to maneuver around those things when it comes to a woman and her body, if you see that she's, you know, clenching up or kind of like, you know, that kind of hurts, oh. but, you know, because you're doing stuff too rough, back off. Hey, of fellas, rest. man, y'all need, to, y'all need to do y'all research, learn y'all anatomy, listen, ask questions. Right. Yeah. But For I, real. I think shorties need to, shorties, shorties should just come out with it. Don't try to protect the man's ego. Let that man know what he's doing wrong. Yeah, no, we have to protect our ego because y'all are sensitive. You can find it, but you can find an ego. You can find an ego friendly way to do it. Are they though? It's, sure. it's not an ego. It's not an eco friendly going with ego friendly. I like that. I like the ego friendly. What they call positive reinforcement. But you know what's annoying? Um, great me. Huh? Nah. Never. Do, I was like, oh, that way. You I it. That's the quickest way to get your feelings hurt. That's annoying. <laughs> Great. So was it yeah. like a B or was it like yeah. an A minus? Yeah, you know. What was that? We don't, tell the truth. We don't ever tell the truth. I don't want right. to grade you. Like, <laughs> he never tells the truth. I'm going to just let nah, you know. No, she just wants now. to upgrade you. It's all right. Too much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You should be able to get your grade right don't after the ever. test. For real, for real. The only test that men need to know is if you, if this is the first time you're having sex with this woman, with this female, and then you call her the next day and she asks you to come over again, that your shit was mm-hmm. good. See, yeah, you gotta get your own. You gotta get your own level result. You can't just ask. There's, says, there's ways oh, of doing that. I'm busy. Then you know you wasn't great. Yeah, if she busy for the next two weeks, she'd be like, <laughs> "Yeah, you know what? I ask, think that's you can ask about stuff, but don't ask her to grade you. Just don't, please don't do that." Because I, I hand her, do, if, hand her if, a can survey. A ask you, can a dude ask you what's popping during though? Like if he's like, "Yo, you, you fuck with that? You like, you like, you like when I do that?" Yeah, that's, uh, that's, listen, that's that's cool. If you, if you just met, don't know. Ask questions. That's what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But if we've been into this and you still don't know, because at this point, women want to know that you learn from their bodies. Right, they I want to know that you have studied and and you got to grasp. Cause if you, but if you you're in, you're so far into this. If you're like months into this and you're asking me now if I mm-hmm. like this or not, then I'm yeah. turning completely off to you because I'm like, you should know. Unless it's something that's brand new. Would you come up with something like? A new skill set, and you like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. I thought you were throwing the right hook. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, like Alicia. So you're saying, like, if it's something you've been doing for the past year, right. don't come asking me now. Don't but if it's something now. new, like, and new, I like, ah. I'm like, you know, you watch the porno, and you're like, oh, I want to choke my girl tonight. I'm a choke crowd, and I'm like, you like that? It's like, yeah. There you go. I know. What is she doing? So, no, what you need to do is get your your skills together and then hand her a menu of the things that you can do for her. And let her pick. And let her pick. (laughs) (laughs) What do you want tonight? Alicia, choking, you can't just throw choking in. You need to be like, you can't just be like, you can't just be like, oh man, I'm gonna just, oh, and then you're like, oh, you can't, like, you can't go full, you can't go full into it. You yeah. gotta do it, you gotta do a little quick something and see if she, yeah, just do it. Levels, over, if levels. Kind, and you ain't, hey, remember, it's and then blood, I'm not like, oxygen. Blood, not mm-hmm. blood restriction, not mm-hmm. oxygen. You gonna kill her if you do oxygen. Blood, not yeah. oxygen. I don't know about what Brandon talking about. Oh. I do. Hey, I'm try. Hey, if you're gonna choke, if you're gonna do the choking thing, you're trying to restrict the blood, not the oxygen. You restrict the oxygen, she gonna die. I don't know, but don't come with some menu. Of, don't, but y'all should converse about what what are hard nose, what are soft nose. You know, because there are mm-hmm. hard and soft nose. Oh, yeah, hard and soft nose, yeah. And whatever, but. And should, 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 should sex talk be on the discussion for the first date? Could you, What'd you say? Could you, 
Yes. If a dude bring I, up sex on the first date, would you be offended? I would be mad. Yeah. Unless, no. Okay, let me say, let me say this. Let me say this. If it's casually, because you know, we're, we're, it's the 30s perspective. We're, we're grown. It's going, it might be casually brought up as a little jokey joke. I'm cool with that. Like a little casual, ha -ha, and then we move on. But if you're really trying to, for real, I'm going to get mad. First That's day, just the art of conversation. You get your art of conversation together, you can you find a way to, to see, right. So, right. So you got to have art of conversation where you say something that's on the fence of serious or funny. And if, if, if she ain't following with it, then it was a joke. But she followed what it did was sit like you gotta learn what to do with that to make it. And, and it's it cool. Work. You can text the wall. I'm like, like I expect you to text the text the temperature, you know, a little bit. So and like a little bitty, ha ha, joke, yeah. All right. Okay. You know that's cool, but like move on because first time, first date, we should not. To me, don't bring that. Don't don't bring that over. Here. See for me, it's all right. Different. I feel like if we're vibe, if we're vibing, we're adults here. I'm just, I'm an adult. I can have a conversation with you about sex without having to lead directly into sex. Very true. Like I could talk to you. About, I could talk to you about like you know, um, you know, I'm. This is what I expect. Like I don't want to have sex from the first date. I want to see where this goes. Like I can have conversations with with, with people like that because. For me, I'm a grown ass woman, so we're gonna talk. We're gonna have conversation about this. It's not like you know, I'm I'm some teenager, and it's like, oh uh, yeah, sex. Uh, no, no, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about something else. And it's like, nah, nah, nigga. Like, how many partners you have? Like, are you crying somebody? Are you sleeping with somebody right now? Because those are things that I need to know. I need to know those things first. First date, I, you shouldn't be I asking know. me how many partners I have. You, you should you not wait. Like, no, okay, no, so what you, no. What you never what you ask the body what count. You like, you want a friends with benefits? Right what, you, what you want right now? I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I had the friends with benefits. I'm cool with. We could talk around some stuff, but I'm not into no, like there's levels. We for could me. be vibing. We we we're adults, so we could be vibing to the point where you know I'm feeling you, you're feeling me. If we want to go back and and get things popping, those are questions that I need to know because if you're sleeping with somebody yeah. else, then I need to know how to protect myself. Yeah, period. see, we not we not getting nothing popping on the first date, so that's that's dead. Um, Ooh. so I'm a, I'm gonna start this conversation I've been somewhere else. <laughs> like, we vibing. You're like, well, I'm just gonna take my menu somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, nah. Like, I have not been off into on. nothing first date. Like, I, no. I mean, but I, I've had, I've had sex on a first date before, but me and this person also ended up being in a relationship. It's a, it's a, yeah. Again, it's subjective. The vibe with that person, and because we, vibe, yeah. we, it's vibe all very you know, it's all in what you're into, what you feel like right. doing for the night. You know what I'm saying? I'm <laughs> not doing that. So, like, if you. If you throw it out there and you don't catch that I'm not with that right now, then I then I have a problem. So can I, I ask have, another question then? The, the huh. next question I want to ask is how important is it for you to uh for you to kind of I'm trying to not rate but um for you to 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 screen the people that you date. Like how what is your screening process? How is it that you can potentially yeah. find yourself on a date with somebody and they they'll ask a question that you're not ready for. You know what I mean? Like, say it again. Like, what is what is your what is your vetting process before going on a date with somebody? Oh. What do you mean, like, like? Because I mean, with me personally, if I decide to take a girl on a date, I feel like I did enough homework before we go. Like, most really, the date's just a like a like a. What they call it a, 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 a not a prelim, but what they call that when you just kind of just going through the motions. Yeah, you know I mean this. I've already I've already did my analysis on you by the time we went on the date. By the time y'all you know I mean? like, invited her on a date. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I'm not, I'm not we going don't on a date. Have to have a brown. whole. I have to. I have to feel um a little bit of a connection. Not not. It don't have to be nothing too deep. And I have to feel safe. Like. You're, Cause you know I have a good um, sense of discernment when it comes to people. So if if I feel your energy, your vibe, I have to feel comfortable around you or feel safe when I'm conversing with you. If you give me any kind of like 
sense of uncomfortability, then we're not going. But we don't have to be talking for months before we go on a date. Like we, it could literally be like maybe a couple conversations and then we go. But I have to not feel no kind of nothing. Like mm, you know, he makes me feel uncomfortable. Like became any of that. Mm, all right. Cool. All right. So don't think do that. Wow. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm all right. Speaking of what, you know, I make wanna... the sex joke one and keep it pushing once you vibe that I ain't with that conversation just yet. Yeah. All right. I want to get us back on the WAP topic because, like I said, politicians and parents are flipping out over this thing. And for me, I think it's the wrong approach because nothing makes a kid want to do something more than when parents and politicians say not to do it. And I, I have a post it. I said, if you want kids not to listen or, or watch this video, then the parents need to learn that song, sing it on Saturday morning while they clean it up and while they making breakfast down the, you know, do all, know all the words, and then use it around the house like, yo, your mama got a wop. And they'll stop listening to that song. They don't want nothing to do with it. They will not, they will just move on to something else. If you tell them they can't do it, they're going to listen to it even harder. That's the same thing that happened when they came out with the parental advisory sticker. I don't know if I yeah. agree with that. I don't I, agree. I agree. I agree with it to a, to an extent. I feel like I feel like maybe Brandon, you oversimplifying it, but it does work. Like whenever you, I mean, you think about the garden. I got the garden fruit. Eat it, and he had one tree that they couldn't eat from, and it's like, ooh, I want that tree. Right. Yeah, man. Now it's hold up, but I got proof though. Think I got musical proof of this. Remember, this happened in our lifetime. This is like a third perspective. Remember when we were kids? And the parental advisory sticker like was really hitting hard on the rap music, right? Mm -hmm. Rappers couldn't be once that came out, the rappers that didn't have it, except for Will Smith, they couldn't they couldn't survive. And cause yeah. kids kids were were only buying rap albums if you had the sticker. Right. That's, That's like yo, because like kid and playing on it, they got killed by gangsta rap because after cause Uncle Luke's the one that came that designed that sticker. Uh-huh. And once that slapped on the album, that's all they want. That's all kids wanted to get because the parents were like, nah. So they were buying it and hiding their stuff. But kids have been buying the hiding music their parents have wanted to hear since like the 50s. Yeah. I can't really mm. relate to what you're talking about that like that. Um, I just feel like it depends on the age of the kid. Um, I yeah. feel like if you don't want your like if you have a kid kid like I said like my brother's nine if I don't want him to listen to it I'm just not playing it around him and yeah, I'm not allowing him to be around people that play it play stuff like that um that's just me but like, if you're dealing with like a teenager you might as well chalk that up <laughs> you might as well chalk it up like by teenage years you're kind of listening to what you you kind of want to listen to almost but um I wasn't just buying stuff because of the parental uh sticker on it I mean, I do think there's a, an affinity for, for that kind of stuff sometimes, but I wasn't just, I like both. Like, I like the, the clean mm -hmm. stuff, and I like the dirty stuff. Like, Do you feel that we're over-sexualizing our children? More Which than we children? have in the past? I don't feel there's any more different than we've done in the past few decades. I think that it's... Yeah, I mean, the 90s was crazy, for real. For real. It was crazy, but... You know, it was one of those things where we used to sneak and do it. It wasn't we know we would we didn't do it. We didn't do it in our parents' faces like we do now. Like right. we weren't openly and bold about it. It was still like you know, you still felt some shame to it at that point because you were hiding it. Even though, you know, you shouldn't have been listening to it and shouldn't have been doing it, but we were hiding it enough that we knew that it wasn't acceptable in our parents' eyes. Well now it's like parents just don't care some parents just don't care they will be bumping that down the road with their three-year-old in the back you singing know, it singing the the lyrics to the song like Shoot, the parents is really posting just... it on their facebook with their, parents, with their kid. kids the parents are posting it on their facebook with their kids and their friends like i, I was that watch. kid the parents I are got... us though that's the thing huh? like right the parents right. are us that's, that's the thing exactly. like we we had that's... access Every I feel like every generation since the Industrial Revolution has had access to a greater, you know what I mean, like a greater mm -hmm. source of information. And 
we had social media. We just didn't call it Instagram. We, we called it grade school, you know what I mean, and recess, you know what I mean? And we would trade those things with our cousins and our friends and stuff on our porches. And I think another reason why it might seem as if it's probably more prevalent now is whenever that kid goes to those things that are, I guess, taboo, underneath that video, you see a rating system that says like, which means that you automatically have approval to like this thing because more other people like it too. You know what I mean? Like, Loaf, you got to realize it's different though. Because when we were growing up, when we wanted to buy stuff like that, we go into the store, we could and buy it without a parent. If it had parental advice or whatever, it was, you could only buy with your parents. Now you have iPods and Apple Music where you could go and buy oh, it and listen to it, go to YouTube, listen to it. Like <clears throat> where, you know, when we were growing up, we had that. But then like on the radio, we, you know, we had the tapes we were putting in trying to hurry up and take the song from the radio. But the radio version of the song was never like, you know, okay. when I heard the real version, but we was trying. That's uh, hold on. Saying, like, now, at the same trying. time, I'm not saying that we didn't, but there were things put in place that made it harder for us to do it than it's it is. It's way now. more, it is, it's way more accessible now. And um, like I said, there is overly saturated now. Like, there's no other options. It just isn't. So, like, um, I do think that's what makes it worse it's not like this is some new concept that's right. out that, right. that people want to you know right. it's not new we know that but there there's no way to know uh, like for some of these parents who aren't as hip they don't know what their kids are listening to through them headphones like they don't know what they're being exposed to and there's no way to stop it so it's it's hard man all right i'm gonna say this because i mean in terms of accessibility to music I mean, we grew like Napster came out when we were kids. That took all that going to the store and sticker stuff out the window. I know how I was. Old how old were we, Brandon? Oh, 12, 11. Yo, I was oh, burning I CDs was at that point. I, I was burning allowed, CDs. I don't. I can't relate to that. I wasn't allowed to. to be I wasn't allowed to either. And wasn't that? Wasn't it one of those things that you had to purchase? No, Absolutely. it's called pirating for a reason. I didn't have access to that. I didn't know. And a lot of my friends that I had, we didn't know about stuff like that. We didn't. <clears throat> Y'all didn't we have didn't a bootleg know. man somewhere? Right, the no. bootleg man. The bootleg I man. Messing with, I wasn't conversing with no bootleg man back then. Right. I was it's not drugs. <laughs> so the drug dealer you were not seen in the days. <laughs> Do you think it's a younger thing? No. Yes, man. It's, yo, it was Napster, Winmix, Winamp, Bear Share, LimeWire, like all that. I got man. into that stuff. Oh, I got into. I knew about LimeWire, but I was I like know. a late. I was in my teen. I was like. I was a teenager for real. Then I was oh, like. Oh, I was right. late. Yeah, I wasn't. But like you said, you were allowed to be more exposed to more things. Right. At an earlier <laughs> age, I wasn't allowed to be exposed to that kind right. of stuff. Me neither. And my mom wasn't with it. My not mom at was all. Not with it. And as soon as she really? found out about LimeWire and we had, because we had a community computer at home that we all went on. So, and it was right in the kitchen. So my mom would be like, what are you doing? What are you on? What are you listening to? Oh, absolutely not. Turn that off. Like, and I'm like, you know, I, like, she finally let me listen to Aaliyah. Because I was obsessed with Aaliyah. And mm. she, you know, when all that went on with Aaliyah or whatever, my mom was like, no, no, absolutely not. And I'm like, that's my girl. Like, you know, AJ, nothing but a number. She said, oh, it's a number. And you're not listening. <laughs> <to it." laughs> but, I remember being 14, but we used 15, to get made probably. fun of because we wasn't allowed to watch music videos. Most music videos, like all the oh, sexual man. Like, we can watch some of them, but, like, all the sex... No, my mom went with it. If it was too yeah. much cussing, kissing on TV, she's turning the channel. See, I watched the box. I used to watch the box. The box used to come on. Me, but see, the devil in my house. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, why it, it came was, on. It I was in my house, it. too. Do y'all remember... Uh, no, y'all don't, y'all, because y'all probably won't watch it. Uncut used to come on 
Real late. I didn't start watching Uncut till I was like 16. And Got I was you. with my, but, my high school sweetheart. The we messed up part crazy. about it was it came on right before like Sunday worship. Like the gears switched so quick. It was considered, you know, most of the it was always like tip drill, booty yeah. shaking, pussy popping. And then it went straight into like the devotional you'd words. Have the, you'd have the cocoa butter right in your hands as soon as the pastor come on. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be like, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 All right, we need to move on, y'all. We've been on this topic yeah, way too that long. Was the good. The whole episode was about good. Hey, hey, hey. No, no, hey, hey let's move on. Hey. All right, okay. So the episode, the serious topic for the night is about black-owned businesses. Uh. <laughs> All right, so let's start with... <laughs> No, you have your own business. The other topic what, was what, so what is it? What's your business? What What are you selling? What are you, you know, do you like Who? being a business owner? Who? Love? I said that's the first, that's the first oh. topic. Like, what's a business owner? Yeah, so like, that's the first topic. Like, black owned business, it's all, it's about black owned businesses. We, we already know that we're Speaking all Speaking of that, I'll, I'll wear my Rebel Bread uh, t shirt here. Shout out, Shout out to Purple Fred. Shout out to Purple Fred. Black owned business with the, the Harriet Tubman dollar. Yeah. yeah, that's Harriet Tubman like, on the 20. I like that. She need that. She need to be on the 50. I think I, I feel like a lot of us have 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 been exposed to ownership to some compare or like entrepreneurship. Particularly when you talk like social media, because I feel like even subconsciously or, or you know, covertly, you're being exposed to protecting a brand. Like everything you do, you know what I mean, is like, oh, I can't post this thing because they're gonna say something, or I can't do that because you know that's not good. It's not a good look for my image. You know what I mean? So I, I, I see. I own my own business for a while. I was. I, I owned a cleaning business. Mm -hmm. What's the oh, name wow. of your cleaning uh, business, Alicia? ET out of this world cleaning LLC. Woo -woo. All right. So, but I owned a business for a while. It was um, a lot of work. It was, um, I had my own um, equipment, everything that I needed to clean. I had my own contracts for three years i hadn't i just got rid of it um may of this year mm. um but it was it was rough for a while um i think i ran into a lot more issues as a business owner being a woman in the industry in which i was and working in a lot of commercial properties with with uh white owners I ran into a lot mm -hmm. of issues that way. Um, I had, you could tell it all over the face of the one woman after I signed the contract to be, to work in a warehouse with her, um, her the business that she worked for. Like it was written all over her face when I walked through the door and she seen who mm -hmm. I was. She didn't yeah. treat me as a business owner. She treated mm -hmm. me as an employee. Like the help So every time she had a, a, a Right. Every time she had a complaint or something, she would call the place where I bought my business from. Like I bought my business from Coverall. Don't ever buy a business from Coverall ever. N Note to self, everybody who's listening, do not ever buy a franchise through Coverall. Period. Mm -hmm. Um. So she would call Coverall and tell them that like you know, oh, this isn't done, that's not done. And she always had a complaint. This woman was never satisfied, ever, ever, ever. She wanted me She wanted me to make sure that, like, the kitchen was clean in a facility that's 24 hours. And when she would come in in the morning and there was a plate in the sink, she'd trip out. And I'm like, I, I'm done cleaning at 10 o'clock at night. So between 10 and, and 8 o'clock when you get there in the morning, like, 
there are other people that are there and she she just complained about certain stuff so as a business owner she treated me as if I was an employee instead of a business owner Mm. Um, she even told me to my fit well over the phone that I'm not a real business owner damn and I was like and I like I told her I was like you own a business huh is she own a business (laughs) Right. That's what I'm saying. So like she, she would, and I, and I asked her, I said, would you be saying that to me if I was a white man? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't. Mm -mm. I said, so you're not going to disrespect me. Mm -hmm. So, but it it was hard as a, as a woman in the, you know, working as a, you know, cleaning business. I got looked at crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Hey, Lux, did you ever own a business name? I didn't. I uh, I had a couple. I had a bunch of like ventures, but I never owned a business. I never went through an LLC or anything. But I've definitely, you know, tried some startups. You know, I had pretty successful T-shirt company for a couple years, and so I understand like the whole overhead and having to do the advertising and ha- having to get over the hurdle of people thinking you were shyster first, you know, and all the other shit, you know, like, uh, it's just crazy, you know, it's crazy when, when my t-shirt do the same thing any other t-shirt do, but I got to prove to you that it does t-shirt shit. Like, it's like Your t-shirt got sleeves on it? <laughs> it's like, do the do, 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 do Tommy Hilfiger t-shirt do the same shit my shit do like if I wear it is it gonna fall it. off it's crazy like like whenever I would I would get okay I would try to sell my t-shirts and I just feel like this is this stuff that black people go through particularly with other black people will make me so yep. mad they'll be like oh is is your is your t-shirt responsibly sourced the fuck is, what does that is, mean is your polo responsible where is your polo from did that shit say made in Taiwan? Then why are you bugging? Why are you bothering me? Like, <laughs> yeah, like the shirt or not, damn it. Like, are you looking for a reason? <laughs> People are just looking for a reason. Like, just, why? Why? Why are you giving me this much hassle? Gosh. Then um, I guess I started getting supported by the Steelers. Oh, well, you know, the Steelers is one of them greedy corporations that don't get back to black people, this and that. So now we can't fuck with your t shirts. What? <laughs> <laughs> what did that got to do with me? Man. See, this, this, that, that, that's, that's part of the problem we're going to talk about. Hey, Sherelle, have you owned the business? <laughs> I, 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 I am a business. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Got you. All right, Jay Z. I'm a business man. I'm a business man. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, yeah, like Shout I started out branding. To DJ I started Terrell. branding. <laughs> I started Shout branding out. myself Shout a out. couple years ago. So, uh, yeah, like I, I'm a professional singer, professional actress. Um, DJ. You are a soul I'm proprietor. I'm now a DJ, DJ. professional DJ. <laughs> Wedding DJ. Um, influencer. <laughs> you know podcaster so like you know I started I started taking what I do seriously a few years ago and uh I started branding myself you know I started my own band um I started going on tour uh traveling um to different countries performing as a solo artist and um with groups and yeah so Sherelle Unique is a business man here we go (laughs) what about you Brendan well, sweet no entertainment's what I do. Uh, sweet that's been, no entertainment. Yeah, that's been that's been something that's been in going for the past decade. You know, big or small. Um, me, you know, we do event production and artist management, and you know, we've done gigs for Urban Week, NAACP, mayors conventions, and weddings for big corporations, and you know. Some stuff. Okay, so whenever you get that photo booth, hit your girl up. <laughs> All right. Gotcha. So yeah, yeah whenever I do that. A photo booth. Yeah. Yeah, the photo booth is making bread. They do, but right. normally for that situation, it's yeah. to answer your question, 
It's actually uh, can be more cost efficient to rent one than it is to own one. So oh, what? Well, no, I'm just saying. Then I can rent it from you, and then you get the profit. That That's got what you. I'm saying. Yeah, but I got to store a photo booth to be ready to rent it. Well, I mean, you can make bread off them things because everybody uh, wants them for every. Yeah. So I actually, well, well, this is so off topic, but they got something else that's even better than the photo book now. It's this uh, big ass mirror looking thing that pops the photos out of the back of it, and it kind of puts the it puts the filters on for you and all this. It's this new thing. Yeah, that's that's the one that they have for weddings now. It looks like yeah. one of those the one of those little mirror those um what do you call them uh makeup mirrors that they have. What y'all have for vanity? Uh, the vanity mirrors. What are they? Vanity yeah, mirrors. Like it's an yeah. oval shape. And you can, oh, they, they come in all different shapes. shapes. They got the big, like, you know, yeah, you maleficent looking one. one. They got the big. They got all different stuff. That's where it's at. It's but yeah, so get straight to your phone and stuff. That's a good idea, man. We can do that. But so that's that's what I've been doing for a while, and it's been a lot of hurdles. Um, I've had similar experiences that Los has had. I've had similar experience that Alicia's had. Uh, those those hurdles, and then you know, once once you've gone through all the hurdles to prove yourself, then that's when everybody's like, "Why didn't you tell me this was this good?" Well, the quality ain't changed. It's always been spectacular, but y'all was causing problems until you know the, the whole bandwagoning thing becomes a thing. But, Right, yeah. Once the once once ever your brand gets hot enough that they have to do it because it validates their life, then you, you get less problems. Why didn't you tell me you was just good? That oh, that was always know, like, yeah. You know what I got when I stopped doing my business? Oh man, why'd you stop doing it? Why <laughs> why aren't you doing it no more? It's like are you, right. are you kidding me? Well, hold up. Are you we all me? we all do that. We all we hear about oh they closed that restaurant when last you ate there oh I don't know like six seven years ago well yeah this is what <laughs> <laughs> well, why they closed I don't have my favorite spot so so I'm, sure got, so I'm pretty sure you got like oh man that I was gonna call you for some t-shirts oh, yeah, I was just yeah, about yeah, to yeah, call yeah. you are you know whatever you know what right, you know what. Like, People do that shit with relationships, y'all. You can get no play in this. Did you get a relationship? Oh, I was I was starting to like you. With just oh, I don't know why. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, uh, our people will do this. They'll be like, oh, hey, get at, hey, get at me, cause my man, he got, uh, he got a pressing business. You know what I mean? And as soon as, and as soon as you get at him about it, they be like, oh, well, that ain't my man, man. You know what I mean? I can't really just. I mean. I, I saw a billboard. I saw a billboard. You know, I thought. <laughs> Our people, people was always going to invest. I was going to invest with you. All right. You know yeah. What I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always something, and like, and that, that's where your today's topic kind of goes with. That person you gave me a number for to go clean is like, oh, what? Like, who is that? Like, oh, that oh him. And I'm like, yeah. It was like, nah, shitty leads. Yeah. for me. And it's like, okay. yeah, they, shitty. Well, see, shitty leads is a thing every business deals with. Every, every business deals with shitty leads. Mm -hmm. uh, they all deal with either they call it wood. They all deal with chucking wood. That's what it is. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, word of mouth. Word of mouth is a you know big way that you know small business gets started. It's just I feel the hurdles and the resistance within the black community. When it comes to black owned businesses, is really a problem. Yeah. Well, what's the what? next topic, Brandon? Well, we did we did we did some of the cons that we've had ourselves from owning black businesses. What about we I don't think we talked about enough pros though. Like what's the pro mm -hmm. with being a black business owner and operator? Y'all got any y'all? That's the only, that's the only pro that I had in this whole experience. It's because of the industry in which I was in. A lot of I I dealt because I was in commercial properties. Is she frozen on your side. Yeah, she was frozen for a minute. Oh, okay. All right. Am I frozen? You lagging. 
Am I frozen? Cause I, y'all, none of y'all are frozen on on my end. Okay, you got this uh, like kung fu movie dub over thing happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say none of y'all are frozen though. I heard all everything that y'all was saying. No, we, we can hear we can hear you. It's just that your picture keeps freezing a little bit. Oh, how about now? Just a lag. Just a little bit of a lag. All right, a little lag, but all right, continue. You can hear but, you. No, like the only pro that I really had was is that um, you know, I was my own business. I was my own boss, and I get to yeah. make my own hours and my own stipulations and my own everything. But you know, I didn't have too many pros because of our because of the industry in which I worked. I was, you know, like I said, I did cleaning, and I work with a lot of corporate. This I did commercial properties, so I dealt with a lot of white-owned businesses because that's where like the area in which I was in. So it it was really to me it was it was a lot. I always had to feel like I had to prove myself or overdo just so they could. But uh, like I said, that there I had a couple people who no matter what I did, no matter how much I tried to please them, they didn't want me there. They didn't want me at all, at not even a little bit. So yeah, I got you. Um, for me, um, the pros is that I just I enjoy what I do, and I'm it's cool to just have something that I that's mine. Um, con for me is I don't I don't like the business side of things. Um, I just like to perform. Um, and so I really don't care to have to be the one to handle all the business stuff personally. Um, but that's where we're at right now. Um, so you have yeah. to collab with Sweet No Entertainment because I love the business side of entertainment. That's where all the excitement happens. That's what well, you through. know, uh, you know, that's what we're doing now. So we have some collaborations going on. We do. We do. Um, so you know, it's cool to work with somebody else. I'm not. Uh, I can't say that I'm great at working with, I don't want to say that I'm not great at working with other people, but I've just, I've just ran my stuff for so long. So right. it's, no, it's, it's definitely hard to, if you've been doing it by yourself for a while to incorporate outside somebody else. Of, yeah. It takes, it takes a lot of thought to be like, Oh, Stop there and let somebody else do something. <laughs> it does. When you know something so long by yourself, it almost feels weird, like, you know, to have someone else, you know, in, in the mix and helping out or whatever. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird thing. It yeah. can be. Anyways. I've experienced yeah. that, too. It's hard to find that balance. Um, um, so, yeah, that's it. And the tax stuff. Oh the tax God. stuff sucks. I hate de- dealing with the taxes of it all. Uh, when I first started, I didn't know what I was doing and what I was getting myself into as far as taxes go. So stay on top of that if you start a business. Yeah. Oh man, learn learn your write offs. Learn your write offs. I'm gonna say that. Learn your write offs. For real. Learn your write offs. All right. Los, positive note on being a black business owner and operator yeah like i said i just want to preface i was i, I never got legit like never had like i got you but even if you're a sole proprietor which what you were i'm not saying you had to get that limited liability corporation mm-hmm. as a sole proprietor you were selling goods and services mm-hmm. i think the best i think the best thing is proving to yourself that you can start something and finish it yeah like awesome. like to me, one of the, even when even with music and stuff, or even with this podcast, whenever you have a concept in your brain and you can materialize it to something tangible, and then you take it from being tangible to somebody actually buying it, that's like an incredible feeling. I feel like oh, should, you that know switch. I, mean? like, I agree. That switch where you know you've created something and the switchover where people are looking for it, where right. people are asking for it, mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, was, oh, I know Sherelle felt this, man. Like, where you go from trying to push yourself, you're the one making the phone calls, and so now you're receiving phone calls. 
to you get know what though, so, Brandon? Bro. Things were actually the opposite for me. Um, oh, what? Yeah, like I was, um, I would be like casually singing places. I wouldn't even charge nobody. I would just go and sing because I just like to sing. And then um, somebody else would ask me. Then somebody would hear me there, and somebody else would ask me. Somebody would hear me there, and somebody else would ask. So that would happen to me so often that then I was like, okay, I guess I should turn this into a business. So yeah. it actually happened the opposite way for me. So um, yeah, like All right. just, yeah. Yeah, like I like even um, my first time leaving the country, I didn't really, I didn't have to push much to do it the first time I left. Like, I, it was just people hearing me sing. Even the second time, somebody heard me sing somewhere, and they're like, "You need to come to Jamaica. You need to come and do this because they're you're, they're gonna love you." So now the third time I left, I actually auditioned and I went for it and I had to I had to audition twice. Um, and I got hired for a tour, but like um, me having to be the initiator didn't start until later in the game for me. Oh, well, see, you try and go to the next level, that's true. You can do that too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, yeah, so you're going to say something, Los. Oh, uh, no, I'm saying, well, I just, like I said, I was just kind of going to expound upon that point. Just whenever, whenever uh, you see something too through and it becomes tangible on somebody. But I was walking, uh, I was driving down the street a month ago, and I I had my t-shirt business between 2013 and 2015. And I just got burnt out. Like, I, I don't even think I made a profit off of it. I think I ended up just breaking even because, like, people don't realize how much overhead is involved with t-shirts. Like, it's a lot. And this is kind of before I was hep to, like, selling stuff on the internet and stuff really like that. Like I was doing a lot of hand to hands and out of the trunk stuff, but I was driving down the street like a month ago and saw somebody with that t-shirt on, and it just That's crazy. Like it just like damn, like all these years ago, like somebody still and the t-shirt held up too. That was another thing that was cool too. Like it didn't look all raggedy and withered. Like you could tell like they took care of it. You know what I mean? And like it was like it was something that like you know it was a, it was because it was good. I, I did good quality stuff, but. Yeah, man. It was just dope just seeing somebody. And they don't know me. And I don't, I'd look like a crazy person if I'd have pulled over. Like, hey, you, you know you know that t-shirt you got on? I made that, right? I got I it. I did it. I did it. <laughs> so I just drove Hey, yo. Here's a so question much. for you, though. If someone came to you right now for a t-shirt request, would you be able to fulfill that order at the moment? Uh, I do still have the prints. I do still have all the stuff. I just... I was going third party. I think that's another thing we should talk about is like all the people Outsource. you got to work with, yeah, to make your drink, to make a yeah. good product come to fruition. Like you got to work with so many different people. Yeah, like I love to watch um, Kev on stage. I watch him every day. But what's cool about watching him is he is. It's cool to like watch somebody else that's like trying to who's an entrepreneur too. Because, like, I'm being entertained by him, but then I'm also, like, being able to relate to his experiences, and I'm learning yeah. stuff, too. So, like, what I had learned was, like, there's a certain place that you can go by yourself, but then there's, you, there's a cap off, and you're going to have to incorporate other people in order to be taken to that next level. So, like, I feel like I've gone as far as I can go alone, um, doing everything myself, like my own equipment, setting it up, breaking it down, putting it together, starting the music, singing, doing my, being on my own sound girl, being, starting my own band. Like I've done as much as I can do by myself. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you, mm -hmm. there, like you said, there, there comes a, a point where you have to start collabing and, and yeah. network. That's and I don't think people understand when they watch these big celebrities and they're doing all this stuff, like, they're only able to do that because they have a team of people with them. They There's don't. no way you're going to be Kevin Hart making three three movies in a year and wrote a book and he got a TV show and a podcast. You can't do that all by yourself. You can't, yeah. especially as a woman. No shade to men because it's the same thing with men, too. You can't do it by yourself. But with women, it's, it's a whole nother ball game because we got hair, we got makeup, 
We got wardrobe. Yeah. We got to make sure that our undergarments ain't showing through our wardrobe. You know, we got to make know what? sure. I don't know if you know this, but there are promoters that do not like hiring female artists because of that reason. Oh, I know. We're much more expensive. There's more expensive. There's like, you got, you got, like, say you got, you have like your, your hair, you got makeup, you got all this, and more people with you. There's more stuff. There's more things. They're like, yeah, it's too much. Find some, you know, guy. It. It's not worth it to them to do it. And I, I get it. I get it. Why would it be? Why would it be? Cause like so, yeah. like I said, I gotta be my own hairstylist, own makeup artist, own outfit. I, so I'm preparing for it. Like if I have an event on Friday, I have to start preparing um, early in the week. I gotta go buy the undergarments that's gonna look right under the dress I buy. Oh, the dress don't fit. And you need a new dress because this isn't yo, flattering. Yeah. So, yeah. Like <laughs> oh, day of, I gotta start ch trying to get ready several hours beforehand, I got to make sure if it's an outdoor event, I got to make sure I'm not sweating all up in the cha-cha area. I got to do oh. my makeup. Make sure my hair ain't falling in the middle of the event. <laughs> I, yo, I, re I remember doing a major event and we I, we had a seamstress who was making the dress at the event. Like, the dress was finished like 10 minutes before stage time. Like, mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I get then, it. like, if you're a plus size woman, if you're a plus size woman, it's even harder. It's even harder as a plus size woman because you got certain areas that's sweating, that, you know, certain areas have to be flattering. It has to fit right in this area and, and be a pro. Like, this dress ain't Damn. appropriate at this place. This It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It is. Your you can't have your boobs out too much at this event. This event, you could do more boobs. This event, you could do more butt. You know, <laughs> it's it, it's going to um, affect yeah. how far you can go. All right. So outsourcing certain things, you, you got to pick which things you can do yourself and what to outsource. Um, yeah. Now, here, here's a question, though, with that one, okay? And this is part, I think this leads into the discussion as to sometimes why when you do have people who really are adamant about purchasing services and goods from a black owned and operated business, there are certain frustrations that we have with black owned businesses. Some of it dealing with either the quality of the product or the time of shipping or, you know, pricing, whatever. What do y'all feel is the frustrations that the black community has with supporting black owned business? Um, I, can I just give you mine? Sure. So, I do not like sometimes the unprofessionalism. Yeah. Like they talk to you as your friend, as a friend, instead of talking to you as a person who's spending their money with your with their business. Mm -hmm. um, as a friend, sometimes I, it don't it don't sound too friendly either. Sometimes, sometimes you're, you're right. To I, little, I agree. Uh, you like. You know I'm spending money with you, right? You're talking to right. me like a little third grader. What right. I, I, I can agree with that. Because, like, for instance, like, the most recent was when I was looking for a caterer for my, for my wedding. And I understand that it was kind of last minute. You know, I had a month and a half to plan everything. So I, I understand that a lot of events people had already hit, were booked for. So, you know, in my one group that I am in on Facebook, I had just put in there, like, can anybody give me some suggestions for a Black-owned catering company? So I got a list of places, and I went through, and I looked at websites. I looked at, you know, stuff that they had advertised. One of them, I was like, absolutely not. She was, she came highly recommended from everybody. But for me to just sit down and talk to you, I had to pay you $50 mm. just to have a conversation. Mm. Man, even attorney Edgar Snyder don't charge money for the consultation. It was right. just a consultation. So I don't even know if you have what I need or if, what I want. Right. But before I can even figure that out, I have to pay you. So, right. Like, it's I just, just an entitlement. Right. But I understand that if you put that in there for, you know, uh, 
after the consultation, I decided to go with you. You put that in there as a fee because now you have to make up my menu. You have to do all this. So if you had an additional fee for that, then I couldn't even be mad for that. But for me to just sit down and have a conversation with you, like that's what it costs. And then it's like, you know, and then I, I, those other people, I called them. I did not hear back from nobody. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Nobody called me back. And then mm -hmm. I got one call back. And some the, she called me back and she's like, she said, oh, girl, I'm sorry. She was like, I was away. She said, well, what is it that you need? Excuse me? Hello? Like, All right, so there's true. unprofessionalism. I agree that happens. There's a sense of entitlement, which I feel is most prevalent in... When I work for hip hop artists, Service. kind of reason why I wanted to stop mm -hmm. is because you know hip hop artists a lot of times will be like, "Yo, I'm the best, and you need I need to get paid for this." I'm like you haven't done nothing. It's your first gig. You demanding money. <laughs> you know, what What are you doing? Nobody like, knows you. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you know, you know, you you know, you know what? You have what four fans, and that's like your best friends. Like, what what supposed to do with that? Right. right. Um. So, yeah, the entitlement thing that needs to change, the professionalism, the professionalism needs to change. And I think part of it is like, you know, you know, however you expect to receive customer service from the big corporations, if you're aiming to be a big corporation, you need to take a look and see how they handle their customer service as to why they're successful or not. Can I, uh, can I ask a question? It's just, this is just a... Uh... I don't know, just kind of like a theory, I guess, or not even theory, but just, do you think that maybe black owned businesses lack professionalism when it comes to dealing with their, dealing with other black people? Because it's kind of like that let my hair down moment when they deal with us. Yeah. Because yeah, when you, but when you think about it, it's like, okay, you know, you gonna act a different way around your coworkers than when your manager's around. And then you know, just just as just as with our status in America, uh, you know, I guess you could look at our, those our Caucasian counterparts as the management of the system. And I feel like maybe they feel like I gotta be nicer to white people or present myself as more professional to white people because those are the people that control industry. Whereas with black people, oh, you my sis, you my bro, I could. I can let my hair down and talk to you a little different. Yeah, you know I, mean? I got you. And I understand trying to connect with your customer in that way, but that letting your hair not down even, mentality. Not even on some connecting stuff. It's just, this is like, like to be honest, I don't even think that they're, that is conscious. I think that they just see a black customer and just be like, "Oh, he cool." Yeah, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. You understand. But, no, see, and that and that's what leads to you know cutting corners. That's what leads to. Now, on the, on, the, on the other way, though, it's not good because then if, if this get this, let my hair down, buddy, buddy, that's where the, the hookup culture comes in. Like, oh, hook me up. Like, and then that's when you're losing money as a business if you're hooking people up. And then if you don't want to deal with them, then, then they think there's a problem with you. Yeah, right. Like, it's crazy. Again, it's entitlement. Bad. Entitlement. I'm a black owned business. You need to buy from me. Well, you don't have what I want. Uh, you're unprofessional about it. And I'm not feeling this connection at all. I'm not I agree with you, Brandon. That's where cutting corners come from. And that's where, like, you know, we start talking as friends. And then it becomes like one of those things where it's like, oh, okay, friend, how am I supposed to tell you that I don't like something? In, in this whole thing when we become that close that too cool or you know oh i can't do this but i'm gonna try to do it and then it turns out terrible but we friends we cool though right sis we good uh, and it's like no nah. i did not just pay you all this money to do this and this is what you do like no nah. and then, and like, then that's where things go left with people and then it becomes a big argument and things end up in court because it's like since you didn't deliver it huh what's what's the what's the good way to establish that like i remember i was working with this girl and and i heard i overheard her on the phone 
she was telling the girl, listen, um, I'm going to refer to you as Miss such and such, and you can refer to me as Miss such and such, and we'll just keep it like that. You know what I mean? Um, you know, basically, she was setting a precedence from the beginning of the phone call on. You know what I mean? Like, I guess because she always, she wanted, she never wanted that client to get it confused. You know, I guess, and I don't know what the girl referred to her as, maybe honey or sweetie or something like that. But she just basically established that. Is there a way to do that when you're talking well, about business? And it's not. Yeah. So there's a way of doing it without being overly aggressive about it, which can be yeah. off putting to people. Okay. Because even no matter what industry I've ever worked, then there were people, there were customers that preferred a more casual interaction. Yeah. Um, and and sometimes you may bend to that a little bit if you feel it helps your sale. But in general, keeping it professional and keeping that boundary up is, you know, using the, you know, Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. This instead of their first name. Um, when it comes to writing your what you speak your, your emails the verbiage that you use yeah. you're not going hey yo what's up and then no nope. it's proper greetings proper sign-offs you know it, the structure has to stay there because as long as you stay structured they can't take you but so far off of that mm -hmm. so that's how you maintain you have you maintain it on your side you don't let the the conversation get too crazy yeah. Don't let it go off track. Keep it business how focused. Far, how far I think you got to be on go. I think you got to be on go a little bit too, though. So yeah. you might not, you might not go yet, but you, you might be, you, you're, you stay ready just in case. Yeah. Um, how, far, how far in advance do you set that precedence? Like, are you setting that precedence from the first email? You've got like a, yes. a letterhead in the email. Yes. yes. I have, I have, I have so legit, templates. Man. I have yeah. templates ready to go. I have, you know, very specific, very, you know, structure on how how you present it. How I want things done. Yeah. And you, you have to, you as, and it's so bad that you as the consumer have to set this, the boundary when it comes to some black owned businesses. I'm not mm. gonna say all because I have dealt with some wonderful, very professional black folks. And they they are the ones that are keeping me going here. <laughs> so, yeah. but I have also dealt with the opposite of that. Never mm. taken away from, you know, dealing with, you know, my people, but I also have to, I know how to deal with them now after dealing with them for so long. Like, I know what I have to do. I have to spell it out for you. I need to tell you what it is I want, when I want it done, how I want it done. And I have, like, that's how, that's how the conversation has to go. I can't call you up and be like, hey, by the way, I need you to do such and such by this day. Oh, but, you know, take your time. Or, you know, oh, I understand. Sure. Or, no, nope, nope. I'll tell nope, you what nope, I'm nope, willing nope. to do right away. Okay, yeah, so right. when I arrive, I expect to be paid off rip. Yeah. You know, for See weddings, that. funerals, I want to be paid as, upon arrival. Um, for one song, my flat rate mm -hmm. is this. For more than the more more than that song, I have um, it's gonna cost. Very you important. This. You know, right away, I'm telling you what I'm willing to do and what I'm not. It's very important to have that set. Very important. Like I said, don't do this hookup culture thing. I mean, if y'all, there is a barter system there. There's other perks and bonuses involved. But make sure that it's it's all established and part of a contract. And she's, you know, and, and make sure you stick to that. Very, you know, do not be lenient. Make sure you stick like you would any other business. If you, you can't be working for another company and then you just making side deals with customers, they you get fired. You would yeah, it's, if you and, and if, if you do decide to be lenient, that then it's strictly on what you've de decided to do and not some choice that somebody else made for you. Can it's I ask another true. question? Do you sure. feel like do you feel like maybe black people don't speak the western language of business? Just because so, like genetically culturally we're just not we're just not adapt adapt to it. I do. I feel that way honestly because like I remember mentioning this on the last episode when I was talking to Brandon, like when I would Uber, the conversations that black people would have, 
um, would be totally different from the conversations that white people would have or be totally different from the conversation that Asian people would have. Like, um, our mind, the things we focus on, it's just different. It's, there's a cultural difference in how we communicate and what we value. Um, and oftentimes, business is not like um, high on a priority list, I guess, or being a boss or being a leader um, of a business. Um, like oftentimes when I would have, when I would be Ubering, I'd have white people in my car. Most of the time, the conversation would be about business, what they're doing to get to the top, what the next move is, what we got to do next. You know, that would be the conversation of boss moves. And then my people would be talking about anything from, you know, partying to who we going to beat up. And, <laughs> you know, that you know wop. talking about that. Wop. We'd be talking about WAP. You know, it, it's <laughs> never. <laughs> You know, I feel like they're taught to be uh, business owners uh, much earlier. Yeah, there is a definitely a, there's a cult, there's a cultural divide there, but I also feel part of this, and this is where I get frustrated with people is they want to do a business, but they don't even do the research for themselves to see what is the industry standards for that business. They don't even look what that like. What is the industry standard? Where's the the you know the, the the minimum standard for this to be successful? And then how to what are moves are above that? And I feel it's even easier now because we have endless access to information. So there's really very little excuse as to you taking a look, doing some research. I think that out. it's it's just not. It, I just honestly think it's just not taught to us. It's not taught to us um, unless you had a parent or parents that have owned a business of their own and it's not that you know it you got the the don't do's of a business uh -huh. from them like I know that my parents own a cleaning business and they gave me the don't do's they didn't give me the you know you should do this or you should do that and sat down with me and have a business plan and do this and do that my parents didn't do that for me they just gave me the don't do's one thing know. i can say but um, I, I think that it go ahead alicia sorry is that like no i just you know i just think that like that mentality when it comes to black folks we we're never taught that because we're always it seems like we're more employees than we are owners. And yeah. that's just our culture. Yeah, change that. that. The culture. Yeah, because it's right. And I mean, and I and I believe the, that we Yeah. We got the intellect I, to do I, it, but I feel right. like in this culture and it, well in this country, our status in this country has always been property. Like the powers that be, the people who are who run the system would not don't necessarily profit from a black community of, of, of owners. You know I mean, like they profit best when the black community is is, is either employee status, worker class, or property. So I don't that's know why they burned get, down Tulsa, Oklahoma back right. in 1921. I don't really get down on black people for not understanding ownership, but I just feel like some. Well, I just feel like sometimes we're asking black owners, especially infant black owners who don't understand who who weren't brought up in a in a culture like that, like a home environment of ownership. Like if you're an infant at ownership, it's kind of hard for me to expect you to understand, oh, this ain't no hookup or you can't be talking like that in here. You know what I mean? I think too, like yeah. a lot of times when black people think ownership, the very first thing we think outside of this is going to be a generational change for my family is this is my business. I could do what I want. And that's why when they answer the phone, they say, who the fuck is this? Yeah. Of, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, well, you, um, like, I think that this is a culture within itself. Like, I think there's um, lots of little subcultures. And I don't, I try to like, like with my kids at work, I always mention them. But um, I try to let them understand, okay, this works for the, the streets. But what works in the business world, and let them know this is a whole nother world. It plays by totally different rules. What works out here does not or work in here. So you got to start being a little multifaceted. Like you got to be able to maneuver in these different cultures 
because they play up by the totally different rule. My one kid, he's so used to um, cussing people out, and then he gets what he and then he gets what he wants. That works for him. That has worked for him in the system. Well, when you get in the corporate world, you're grown now and you're a young black man. You will get locked up. <laughs> they don't care ah, about your see. syndrome. They're looking yeah. at you like you are a tyrant. So you got to learn how to apply pressure without adding that aggression. I was about to say that. I'm like, there's a way to cuss people out professionally. There's a way right. to do that. Right. So I try to show them how to go about <laughs> express what you need. But you don't have to go be aggressive because the way, especially the way white people oh, interpret scary. that. They're so scary. They're scary. Yeah. And it's going to work against you. So they got to understand that that's a right. whole nother world that plays by totally different rules. It is. I think black right. business owners too need to understand, like, I had this one boss, man. He said, listen, anytime you spend your money, you're doing charity. And when he, whenever he said that, I was like, that don't, what, how, how am I doing charity? Huh? I'm getting something. He said, anytime you spend your money, you're doing charity. And the reason he said that that is, is because we live in a, 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 a capitalist society, which means that if you want a burger, you could get a burger from a thousand places. The fact that you walk into a specific place and give them money, you basically done charity. You could have took that money anywhere. And so that's, that was kind of his way okay. of basically saying, like, that's why your customer service got to be on point because... The point and the product got to be tight. Huh? And the product has to be tight. Every aspect right. of it yeah. needs to be, at, like I said, it, 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 above industry standard. Yeah, and I never right. understood that. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, my bro just, you know, my bro just you know, tried to you order... Your product line needs to be. Say what? You know where your product line needs to be? You said, you know where your product line needs yeah. to be? Yeah. I've always made Chick-fil-A. Chick they, they, must, they, must, they must be brainwashing people. Yeah. Chick-fil-A is up. a different like, there are, there are a cult or something. I don't they get are it. like the standard. Whoa, they in the back. No, they're above the standard. They are the standard, though. They they're are above standard. the standard. They should be the standard, but yeah, I don't know, they, know what they, they do with that. The sunken place at Chick Fil A. For real, for real, <laughs> sums up. They, <laughs> they actually because it. different. It's just like it's just like one of those things where, like, for me, if if all those fast food restaurants were in one spot and Chick Fil A was there, I'm picking Chick Fil A. Right. Why? I like the food. Their product is good. Their customer mm -hmm. service is amazing. And if mm -hmm. they, if they, I mean, like, you know how many times that, like, I, I, the first time that I missed something in my bag, I was so hurt. And I was like, they will <laughs> never do this to me. Like, ever. Right. Be right. like, ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Like, and you could, like, that kind of goes to my boss's point is like, you could get a better chicken. You could probably make a better chicken sandwich. You go there simply for the experience. Like, right, right. Because you know what you're going to get every time you go there. Oh. There is a standard in which they hold. And, and, and it never fails every time you go. It's the same thing over and over again. Where McDonald's, you could be sitting there for five minutes or you could be sitting there for 15 minutes. Like, mm -hmm. you got options. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. oh. and, then, and what's crazy? What's crazy about McDonald's? Right, and they always like, forget something. You expect you expect terrible service. Like you go you go there and you just like man, what I'm gonna get today? Because I know they're gonna be some <laughs> shit. Yeah, See, man. and I, I don't I don't bar. understand people that go to like McDonald's and then they got all these special orders and fancy shit, and then they be uh, upset when it's wrong. Uh uh. Look, they have they have <laughs> numbers for a reason. Bad. You you <laughs> pick a number. <laughs> Roll out that drive through until I check my nah. bag. Nah, exactly. listen, listen, I'm, not, I'm, sure no, I'm talking about the people when they go in there. Uh, look, I want a number three, but I want to, I want to switch half a number three and get a number seven. But I want you to take off the onions off of this and put it on the chili, which I'm a substitute from the. Front. They do all this shit, and then they're like, they, "Man, I mean, it's wrong." Might be a particular eater, and if you no, nah, well then don't go to McDonald's. I'm gonna listen. ask for what I want. Then you know what? No, that no. You can't expect that. Gave me what I you, want. 
Like if I'm you got a really menu, good. if you're ordering from a menu that got numbers, you're supposed to pick that number and leave that number alone, or else you're gonna get some bullshit when it gets in your bag. The food made the way I want it made. Then do you have to go somewhere else? Bro, no, no, I don't. I'm just gonna I'm stay. I'm gonna sit right at the front of that line and make sure my orders made the way I asked for it to be just made. Just pick your number and move on. No soup for you. Beat the fuck up, Shrek. <laughs> 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 you gonna get beat no, up? Listen, <laughs> you gonna well, you, be sad. Don't make me do. Who gonna check me, boo? <laughs> the, 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 the soup Nazi. The soup Nazi gonna come. You post a. Audio soup, give your money and move down and no soup for you. Like, that's it. Who gonna check me? Last when time I went to McDonald's, restaurants in general, I got a do... Big Mac, right? Uh, and I only had one patty on my Big Mac. Uh, so uh, I called. I don't know how you mess that up. It's in the song. Right, there's a whole I song. They were out of fries one shit. time I went. I was like, what? Fries? How you out of fries? I called. Mm. And I don't even know why I did that to myself when I was trying to say that I was like lying or some shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. They tried to make it like my because, because they're <laughs> what, because there are people who do that. They're, you also got it in the customer they got. It's not just the workers, the customers they get. So there mm-hmm. are people who call up lying about their Big Macs, they get free Big Macs. Yeah. My, My head friend, just hurts just thinking about the trauma. I know. <laughs> it's trauma. It do you is feel traumatic. Like, do you feel like black <laughs> people it? give bad service at corporations like that because they just feel undervalued and feel like they're do they feel like they feel like they're not a part of that system? Like no matter how much they try, like they'll just never yeah. be a part of it. No. Uh-huh. There, no, there are some people who do that, like, you know, working for this white man, blah blah blah, and they do this whole thing. And Would then, you think that we're bad customers too? Because I, be. I think we're terrible customers. Well, I think I think I think everyone has their level of terrible terrible. I mean, you got the Karens no, too. The I'm Karens kidding, are terrible customers as well. So don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say that you know culturally other cultures aren't as bad. But I feel that we're bad customers too. Like I. It, I worked at Burger King from 16 to 21, and I had a man throw a cheeseburger at me. Oh, just damn. open, open wrapper. What was it about? Threw a cheeseburger because it was wrong. Oh, my that's man. what that's what it was. <laughs> and I said, I had a milkshake thrown at me. I, damn. I mean. It, you'd be surprised the type of things that I've dealt with working in fast food. So I feel for these people. That's why I don't really like when my food is wrong. I just keep it pushing. Like I'm just like whatever. Like I'm not even. I'm not even gonna do all of that. I just don't feel like it. Oh. But you know, I've dealt with a lot of even even like working in the, at the hospital. Like I dealt with parents, like consumers that are just. Ooh, child. Mm-hmm. If I could go through that phone, ooh, child. Yeah, I, I, see, I've dealt with, I've dealt with that. I've dealt with all walks of life of people that are just horribly rude to service people or people they feel is beneath them all the time. That's 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 the nature of customer service. Mm-hmm. The general public are assholes about shit. Uh, <laughs> But, nah. like, if it's them, they, they want all the understand Them or somebody they know, they want all the understanding in the world. In the world, of course. How if do you it's think? somebody they don't know, then it's like, oh, no, that, you know, it's a totally different thing. Yo, y'all watch that girl get beat up with the blender at McDonald's? Ooh. She got Ooh. beat up with the blender? That was, yeah. That was crazy. Did you see that, Los? That was, I but that. you know what? That was the client's fault. Like, it was. By far. By far. By far. I don't by know how far. that lady got fired. I mean, maybe they had to fire just because, you know what I mean? It was, that's the She that's busted she her did. right in her head with that, with that, uh, with the blender from McDonald's. Because she started but throwing food at her, right? Or something like right. that. Right. She threw food at her, and the girl, literally, it was just the best reaction I've ever seen in my entire life. Gotta hey, yo, y'all got to send me this video, man. Mm. She threw it at her. She literally turned around, did one of these. 
bow right over to her head. He hit her blender. right in the head. Hit her right in the head. I was Big like, her head. <laughs> she deserved it though. She deserved every bit of that. She, she had it remember, all coming. This is the thing too. I'll say like, we live in a society where there's never a reason for violence. But let me tell you something. There's consequences to everything you do. You go to somebody's place of business, and that was a grown woman. You know, like when you're right. talking to a grown ass woman like that, she probably got kids of her own. Like, and then you start throwing a sandwich at me. Shh, your ass about to get fucked I up. I can't in. say there's never a reason for violence. But well, no, you I, throw I, that I, sandwich I don't, at I don't me. Feel that. I don't if you throw that, that sandwich at me, then we've crossed over into that into I, that world. I don't feel that way, but I feel like that's the society we live in. Like, uh, you, you'll you'll come across people, you'll be like, uh, you know, you'll throw a punch and they'll be like, you threw a punch? You guys were just talking. You guys were having an argument. No, but that dude was too close to my face. He spit on my nose. Like, I felt offended. His Nigga, finger punch, was right throwing. here. I, I felt scared. Right, yeah, I didn't like, know. That, was more than, that wasn't no just words. He deserved to get punched, period. Like, so, right. Um, <laughs> Brandon, what's the next topic? Okay, so <laughs> yeah, we've been getting off topics now. All right, so the next one on the list. Yeah. Or what haven't we discussed that's on the list? Yeah, we've been jumping over, which is cool. I mean, we've been definitely have letting the thing flow. So we pretty much covered everything, man. Other other than that, other than like the positive impacts that supporting black business has on the community. And you know what we need to do better as a culture to make sure these are successful. That's what's last. I mean, I feel like ownership is like, if you, I feel like the best thing as a culture is to teach the youth, and you got to teach them through your actions. Like, uh, you know, I, Alicia talked about having her business. You know, I'm not sure what ex, I don't. I'm not sure how much her daughter picked up from that, but you know what I mean. Like the youth yeah, children are the future. Yeah, man. And, and uh, see, you know, they see your involved with ownership, or or even just taking care of your stuff. Like, you you can learn a valuable learn, uh, lesson about ownership and entrepreneurship, but just watching your parents take care of the stuff that they got. You know what I mean? Like, I know uh, yeah. Monique was talking about how um, she somebody <laughs> told her like, you know, you always look so nice. You should. You need to look like what the job that you want to uh, have. So, like, you dress you for the job be, you want. Yeah. So like they need to be able to see you as that on all occasions. Like, okay, you want to be an yeah, entertainer. I mean to you cut you off, like Brandon. I put that video in in our thing. All right, I got you. I'm gonna check it out in a little bit. All right. Um. So like. That that's a thing too, like looking like what you want to become. And um, I know one thing I like to do, I like to study and do research on people that are doing what I love to do, or people that I admire. If I admire their business yes. skills, you know, I'm watching YouTube videos, interviews. I'm trying to see what paths they took. Yes, research power is knowledge. I mean, knowledge is power. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. Very important. Anytime yes, I was doing one event, I wanted to do that. I wanted to elevate my events to be as close to the professional level as possible. I remember going to, to venues, and they would have stage and lighting. I was bringing my own additional lights. I'm bringing my own fog machine. I'm bringing my own stuff because I wanted my show to be as close to the big stadium concerts. In, in like the venue might only hold 100 people, but I wanted to be as close to the stadium concert level every time I did something. Quality you, know, over you know what else I learned? Quantity. One thing I've learned that I, I thought was a stupid statement that was made before until I own my own business. It says, scare money, don't make money. Oh, and yeah, sure. like, so I, you know, I, I went and bought all this equipment and I had everything that I needed. And it cost me a lot of money. It also paid off in the end. It paid off. Yeah. Because when we had that big flood here a couple of years ago, I think it was like two years ago, a year and a half ago or whatever, we had that big flood. 
and I had one of those carpet cleaner things that I bought. I spent so much money on it, but then people were calling me, asking me like, yo, can you come do my carpets? It got water all over it. There was other businesses. There was, I, I made money. So like, you yep. know, and my sister, same thing. Cause she owns, she does, it's called Ren and Park. Check her out on Facebook. She does different like things like for like she did my whole wedding. She did everything. She made most of the stuff for my wedding. And then like she went and bought the big cricket, the one that cost a whole bunch of money. She bought the t-shirt press that she has. She does t-shirts. She bought like the little iron on thing so she can iron it on different um like cups and stuff like that to make different mugs and stuff like that so like she's like right. i spent so much money on stuff but she did her research she looked it up she's seen what everybody else is having that that is doing the same thing that she's doing what are they doing that i need to do Industry so it's standards. Like, you know i i have right right so but like, and, yeah and, and to you got, piggyback you off money. of what alicia's Piggyback off of what Alicia said, like like you said, investing in your in in your brand. Um, I eventually bought my own equipment, so mm -hmm. then that opened me up to doing gigs. Um, like I could do a one man band. I can um I like you, I went from singing um and doing my own shows to um I can now rent out my equipment. Um, so I can make money that way and have made yep. money that way. I can now DJ an event. Um, I can make money that way. So that opened up. Or if I want to have a show with my band, I have my own equipment. I don't have to pay for a sound man if I don't want to. I mean, I could oh. and, and should. But like investing in your in your craft and, and putting money into your craft. Yeah, owning the equipment, man, that makes things uh, so much better, man. You have you just have access to it at a moment's notice. You you know just not costing anything extra. And you're also you learn your equipment, you know it, so you're able to set it up, tear it down quicker. Yeah, man, it's all about that. That's, don't yeah. be scared to ask questions. Hang with people who don't know what who who have the solutions. Don't hang with people who have the same problems as you got. <laughs> oh, that's something else. That's something else. Very good point you're bringing up because I feel that very often in the black community we don't share knowledge like we should. Like other cultures, they'll share knowledge. But hey, yo, this is how I got here. Try this, do this, boom. And we're kind of like, yo, I figured it out. You figured it out on your own. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know, cause this is that difficult to do nowadays where we live in an information age where people understand or starting to understand the value of information and they're starting to monetize it. Well, they are monetizing it, and that's very true. I just feel that a lot of times, you know, in terms of finding, you know, because think about this, people used to have, you know, they'd be an apprentice for a mentor to learn stuff, and I don't feel like we have that mentality happening. Yeah. We don't do the wow. mentorship. Well, there's a lot of pride sometimes in, when it comes to letting people yeah. know what you don't know. It'd be like, right. I don't like that. Here, I don't know that. <laughs> right. I don't like that. I just think I just feel that like I'm here for us to all win. Yeah, you're right. There, there really normally there's enough for everybody to eat, man. So just oh. right. Um. So like you know, if I can help, and you know, if you succeed, I succeed. We're we are we are especially like. For me, I, I, I'm all women. I'm all black women empowerment. So, like, you know, if my sister's winning, I'm winning. Like, you know what I mean? If, if we could do for each other, do. Like, that's why I was real big on the one group that I, I got into on Facebook. Like, it's called the uh, Pittsburgh Brown Moms. And, like, you know, I like that, you know, we can count on each other. We can rely on each other. That's my whole thing. Like, 
you know, doing it together, like it takes a village in everything that we do. Everything that you do, it takes a village. And I, I am, I am a soul believer in that because all those corporate people, all those CEOs that got to the top, they had to have a village to get there. They didn't, they did not, I don't care what anybody say, you didn't do it by yourself. You didn't. Mm-hmm. There was always somebody, whether it was your wife, whether it was your kids, whether it was your your mom and dad helping you, forking it out for you, whatever the case may be, whether it's that mentor person that took you under their wing to give you the advice to help you, whether it was the person that gave you $10 when you didn't have nothing to yeah. eat, it took a village. It took everybody around you to help you succeed. So when people tell me, oh, I did this all by myself, and it's like, no, you didn't. You didn't. You really didn't. But Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. You put in the work. Yes, you did. You put in the work. You did it. But I'm just saying there's there's nothing wrong with helping each other win. And I think that, you know, that culture of of the black community, I think that I wish that would stop. I really do, because it's so hurtful. It's, It's very hurtful when they try, like when people try to literally destroy you. You can learn from your enemies as well. So you should be watching your enemies or your competition as well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, like oh, I remember man. hearing something about Blockbuster. I, I remember hearing something about Netflix initially reaching out to Blockbuster, uh, Netflix and Hulu or something. They were they initially reached out to Blockbuster and Blockbuster didn't want to hear anything about what they were doing. And mm-hmm. then we oh. see what happened eventually with that. Um, oh. and, and had they collabed, we don't know what would have went on. But yeah, we'd be screaming blockbuster right now. Right, right. Damn so like right. you, you should movies. be paying attention to your competition and what they're doing as well. Or like There's only one blockbuster left right now you. in Oregon. Yeah, people who are less than you. Everybody got a little something that you could be learning from. Oh yeah. And you know what? And also good not to get complacent. It's always good not to get complacent. Always keep quality control. On the, always look at where the industry is and where it's going, man. I'm telling you, it's going to be that. Yeah. And be ready for whatever. Like, if you want to travel the world, get your passport. You don't have to wait for you don't have to wait for the opportunity to come to you. You can create opportunities. Yeah, um, you can create opportunities. Yourself. You know what you want to travel? Go get your passport. If you got it on you already, then you if you if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. There's that too, and and understand if you're aiming for that top spot, best believe when you get to that top spot, people are aiming for your spot. That's what it is. So you know, I look at I look at these fast food restaurants like like we were just talking about, and how like you know, McDonald's being around and then Wendy's came and then Burger King. And it's like, you know, they all, you know, were like, oh, I could do that too. Or, oh, I could do that too. They found their own identity in each other, like from each other. They found what people like the most and they, they made it their own. And then like, you know, like we were just talking about customer service with everything. Like that's what makes you stand apart from your, other competition along with you know my product like you know quality, Burger King was like oh I'm gonna do flame broiled you got the frozen stuff we got flame broiled and Wendy's is like oh yeah well ours isn't frozen at all so like you know what I mean like McDonald's is frozen patties and Burger King is flame broiled and Wendy's is like well we don't freeze our shit nasty like you know what I mean so like everybody has their own identity even though they sell the same product that that's a very good point I want to I want to say this um first and then say something else I know biblically um it says to write the vision and make it plain so if you have an idea write it down um make it clearly write it down and start making steps toward towards it because the universe is like water It'll, it'll start to move and manifest in your favor once you write it down and once you speak it into existence. So I want to say that. But then the other thing I want to say is, um, have you guys ever seen The Founder? Yeah, with um, Michael Keaton. Yeah, yeah, like where it talks about yeah, how McDonald's. McDonald's got started. Yeah, Ray Kroc. Yeah, that, the Ray Kroc, his business plan was great. And I know the McDonald's brothers are probably pissed. But 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's I, just, let's just, let's just say this. I wish they would have went back and redid that damn milkshake machine. But oh, that's man. just another story for another day. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it's a whole other company. But anyways, because even in the movie it kept breaking down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at yeah. this point, it, that's just an ongoing joke. They're never gonna fix it. Yeah. Like, but <laughs> them, 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 them milkshake machines really don't be down. From my experience, like when right. I worked at Wendy's, them shits was just broken down because we ain't feel like cleaning them shits. Right. So wait, so wait, so then there's that. So sometimes we're not broke broken. <laughs> sometimes they tell customers they're broken. So they don't have no, to clean it out. We just broke it yep. down for the night. We already cleaned it out. We broke it down. Like, because we did the same thing at Burger King. I was like, man, I'm trying to get out of here early. Right. I was like, we break that should be broke like down by o'clock. 7 o'clock. <laughs> right. If Chick fil A had a milk machine, milkshake machine, it would never be right. down. You damn right. You damn right. That shit was broken down by 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock right. is not yeah. close at 11. But see, but see. Right. But see but she wants Chick Fil A service. Right. Chick Fil A. Uh, see, you don't understand, it, it would never be down. It would never be down. You put one of those yeah. big things of milk in there, and yeah. then you having to clean that shit out. Yeah. Like you understand? Yeah, because it's soft serve. Into that? No, yeah. man. You gotta hey, like. Alicia, there's, there's too much work that goes into it. Hey, what it you is. know about what you know about turning what you know about turning the uh the welcome lights off. I'd like to, I'd like yeah. nine o'clock. Yo, we used to turn them shit off. Like if we close at eleven o'clock, ten thirty, we would just turn the lights just off, off and hope hour. that nobody comes. And we would start cleaning up everything. She, 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 she wants she want Chick Fil A service <laughs> everywhere. But you know what? You be mad as hell if you go to the place and you know they open. And then they be like, "I'm sorry, no, 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 we no. closed." We would be open. I see y'all in there, y'all, and I see y'all. No, we still open, but we yeah, would we turn off the lights to deter people from coming. I went to McDonald's a couple of times where I know I looked online. You're not allowed to be closed right now. And I know. Like, you could be closed at any time now. I'll be like, nigga, COVID-19 be closed. I, I know. COVID okay. got everybody closed whenever they want to. <laughs> Listen, so, I tell so you I was... here now. If it's close to closing, I don't even go because I know right. we need to do close to closing. The right. way I'm eating that food, cause no Yo, way. man, when I used to work at Liz, we used to like in the mall, whatever, we used to put that gate down on like three fourths of the way. We weren't technically closed. <laughs> so they're like, so wait, so here's what ends up happening though. Light. You start you start counting the money y'all, you know, for a register and shit. And if somebody want to run up, but like they got like a hot date, they need a new hat. But we like, all right, look, since we already started counting the register, we'll sell you a hat. You got about four of them, right? And some of them will do that. You want, you want, you want to make it worth our while to recount this shit tonight. <laughs> Somewhere in here. Hey. No, I'm telling you, we had a whole routine. We had a whole routine. Well, so, we all closed right. at eleven. We shut the lights off at ten thirty. We sent all of our meat through for that last half an hour. We had it there. Our French fries was down. They was sitting there. We cleaned everything. They would sit over the fryer. They, they ain't sitting in the hot port thing anymore. Nope. They're sitting over the fryer. If you want them warm, we'll put them back in there. He wasn't flat. Swear to God, I was ready to home. And it's funny because you're laughing, but you know, Los. <laughs> Leisha, what you know about? Huh? What you know about somebody say, "I don't want soda in my fries," so you just put them back in the grease real quick. <laughs> Hell yeah! So wait, so y'all, y'all need wash your soda off with the, the grease. The Here you uh, go. Y'all funny, yo. Gotta wash the soda off. So wash this off with right the right grease. Off. That's messed and up. Then, all right, all right, yeah. all right. We're gonna wrap this up. All right, I want each one of y'all to give me one thing that you feel black owned businesses as a suggestion that they can do to improve their success. Just one quick thing. Well, we gotta talk about too um, the What's importance of supporting black businesses as well. Oh yeah. Okay, let's go with that one first. Go ahead. Let's go with Sherelle. Let's write it up. Um, it's important. Well, how about we do both questions then? Um, well, I think we kind of talked about how to improve, but I just think, you know, just 
staying professional and setting those boundaries um, and stop getting comfortable with with folk just because we are of the same color. Um, but it's important to, to it's important to support black businesses um, because we just want to see more of them and we want to see our community thrive. Yeah. All right, Alicia, you up? Um, I'll do the importance of supporting. Support, support, support. The only way that I feel that people could get better at, um, you know, giving that good customer service and, you know, like Sherelle said, like setting those boundaries and standards is if we support more. Um, people get frustrated very quickly with things like that. So I feel that the support is needed so we can become a standard. We can become a, a necessity. We can become, you know, the norm out here instead of going to these bigger corporations or or going to a white-owned business. Not saying that they're not as important as black-owned businesses, but we're we're so, you know, demoralized that, you know, nobody wants to, they feel that all this stuff, whatever. But anyways... I feel that we just need to support, support, support. Um, and, and I believe that the whole thing coming up with um, customer service and stuff will get better because it becomes normalized. All right, Lauren. That's a good point. It was, it was two questions. Remember the other question? One was question was about uh, the importance of Black companies in the Black community. You know, another one was name one thing that you feel black owned businesses need to make sure they focus on so that they can become successful not only in black communities but you know, globally pretty much universally successful well i mean i think that like ownership in general changes your political status you know what i mean like like the way that you are viewed politically so or, or socially i feel like all of that is attached to how much stuff you own like you know, these white, like like our, our counterparts, our white counterparts and stuff, the reason why they're so interested in the laws and the policies and stuff like that is because ultimately it directly affects their way of life and their bottom line. So they're going to go out and vote and they're going to make, they're going to be aggressive about who makes it in the office because those people are going to have, those are going to be the legislators for their property. You know what I mean? So when when black people own more stuff, then I feel like we'll be taken more seriously in this country. Um, and I don't know. I guess that's like that's like two part, right? Did I answer both of them at the same time? Yeah, Maybe. sure. <laughs> There's no like right or wrong answer with this. Right. So it's just like I don't know. I guess my advice to any black black owner, I don't know. Like for black ownership in general, is just like, uh, be patient. You know what I mean? Like, be a patient customer and be a patient business owner. Like, you know what I mean? You don't have to be the most – the one thing I hate about black business people the most is when they're all staunch and funky acting, like they've been in business 28 years. Like, nigga, you literally just opened this barbecue stand yesterday. <laughs> like, do not be talking to me crazy. Like, can I get – But I've been eating barbecue my whole life. life. <laughs> Like, I gotta be a barbecue like, <laughs> <laughs> But you know how bop, bop, barbecue make you slap your mama. <laughs> they they like one girl and all of a sudden they got down uh Warren Buffett. It's like, come on, brother, chip. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't take yourself too seriously. Take your time, be patient, be a patient customer and a patient owner. Like, you know what I mean? Let it mature. All right. it I like that. Yeah, yeah. Like that. I like Can that. I say this real quick? Because I, I didn't say this. But Product. Make sure you. I was just out. You about to take. You about to take mine. I was about to say that you got to be right. impeccable. Got to be impeccable with your product and your service. I Man, that's going to be your biggest friend right there. Mm -hmm. And whatever service or product you're providing, you need to be impeccable. My bro just bought a. He bought from a black-owned business that makes pancake mix. It's supposed to be a blueberry pancake mix. The bag said fifteen to twenty pancakes in it. There was five blueberries in it. Oh dang. See what I mean? And he's like, yo. And then it took, like, he ordered online for, like, four weeks to get there. Like, it was just not a good experience all the way around. And they, so, they, 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 uh, 
they advertise 20 pancakes. They ain't advertise 20 blueberry pancakes. No, blueberry pancakes, then you know what? Then I'm going to I'm gonna buy, you know. See, then that's when you go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, you do that. And, and fine print, like, technically right. No, see, but, like, a impeccable product. Your product needs to be stellar. You need to shine, stand out. That product and service, the level of service and product needs to be Right. That's awesome. It needs to be awesome. It needs to be that everybody else. And that's my biggest, my biggest gripe is that. Yes. All right. So in terms of the importance of my community, man, it's all about opportunity and building community wealth. So that's what I'm all about. Can I that's shout out a couple of my friends' businesses? Well, you Go just took out, you just took my idea. I was just about to say that. Like, we need to throw out just a few businesses that we know of, black-owned businesses. All right. All right. So, I'll throw out um, Lincoln Heritage for my cousin Brian. I'll throw out Renan Park for my sister. She's on Facebook. Check them out. Check her out. She does all kinds of stuff. My cousin Brian from the Heritage, he does insurance. So if you need health care, or not health care, but life insurance, because all this COVID stuff going around, people dying left and right, hit him up, him or my cousin Regina. They both work for the same company. My girl, Just Jay, she does my cynic leads for me. I love her. She does it right. If you check out my wedding pictures, my girl, Crystal Flat. She did my hair so dope. She did. She did a hell of a job. Check out my girl with her hair. She don't do. She says she don't do braids no more, but she definitely will do like um, sew-ins and stuff like that. Also, Tay Essentials. That's my sister. She does wigs, custom wigs, lashes, and lip gloss. Check them out. Um, I'll go next. Uh, hire me. I'm a professional singer. <laughs> a professional singer. I have my I'm old band. You're so short. All right, DJ. Right. <laughs> DJ. So, I could do a web band band. I could do. I could do a full a full band. Like I could. I could come and DJ your event. I could come. What, what you need? Call me. So that's what they, my, uh, my dad has a bling bling car clean. He details vehicles. My mother is a professional singer. Um, she has the uh, star project. So she goes and performs and sings and, and acts professionally. My brother is the curse beats. He's a, uh, uh, he does uh, beats, produces beats. Um, my aunt, Creative Creations, um, she she creates masks. I showed you guys some of those. She just wrote an autism book for children, um, for for children who have siblings who have autism. She just wrote that children's book. Um, let's see, the girl who does my hair. Well, it's two of them. There's there is um, Nikki at Treze Salon. She owns that salon. She does, did my hair last Thursday and my curls are still popping um, <laughs> and there's Rita girl. too Rita is a beast if you're looking for a hairstylist um shoot I feel like I'm forgetting something top notch ENT that's my boy Twan he DJs he's karaoke DJ regular DJ he sings professionally um uh genuine pub is owned by Michelle um shout out to her I think you try to think that now. Now. Get I might think all right, all right. She trying to have a whole yellow pages in here. <laughs> so long time, <laughs> thank shit. <laughs> Yo, like we're gonna start playing the playoff music like they do at the war show. So wrap, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. <laughs> Maybe like shout out to Rebel Bread as well. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wrap it up, like. Shit. All right, all right. Well, I'm glad you listed like 38 black-owned businesses. <laughs> hey, that is oh, kind of good. One more, I want to add uh, Alan Rubin. Alan Rubin, shout out to them. I've been performing here for the last five, six years. So they're a pro they are a black-owned Italian restaurant, award-winning restaurant. So shout out to them. All right. Shit. 
I'm sorry. Um, Ground mode, music and management and uh, business solutions. Uh, Carpe Diem, uh, beautifully hairstyle salon. She's out in uh, New Ken, um, but she's like awesome. She does like natural hairstyles. She also does like hair therapy. She makes her own products. Uh, dang, my mom, she be selling uh, uh, jewelry. I forget what her brand is called, though. I got to remember what that's called. Mm. Um, you like paparazzi? Uh, I think, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what she does. That's yeah. a shame. Hey, that's I don't good. got the best, I don't got the memory like uh, Ms. Sherelle. She was rolling them all. That's um, your mom. I uh, know. Uh, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's terrible. But yeah. Anyway, don't hey, worry, she'll be talking about you later. I know, but hey, I shouted her out though. At least I shouted my mom out. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but that's, that's it. That's all I can think of right, right now. I know somebody's going to be mad at me. Right, me too. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's late. All right. All right. All right. So <laughs> make your calling in election short. Go ahead. Yeah, we're gonna be here real quick. All right. So it's AMH Productions for any of the stage management and direction needs. Mostly for like plays, musical stuff like that. Uh there's clearly perfect piece uh, for high quality jewelry uh and accessories for both men and women. There, of course, sweet no entertainment, that's me. So I just something similar to what Miss Sherelle does, but you know, I do artist management, contract writing, um, you know, for your hospitality writers and everything like that. So all the business side of arts, you can you can talk to me about that. We can make something happen. Plus, stage production and event planning. Uh, I also got uh, Dana Delgado Photography. She's awesome. Uh, does a lot of a lot of photos for you know graduations, weddings, anniversaries, and even for artists. If you need your band photos or you know whatever you need to put online she does all those things uh and she's awesome with that so i'm gonna cut mine off right there i'm gonna add some more black well storytellers all right so Eva media shout out to them. <laughs> yeah. anybody uh, that's helped me i gotta so. throw them out there even media <laughs> i got you you know what make a post for real i'm serious make a post on facebook let's yeah. list them list them, all. List them. <laughs> Add it under this. Add it under this on Facebook. I yeah, will. there you go. Do that. Do that. Because I didn't forgot 70% of the people you said. Real talk. Well <laughs> And I would like to I would like to look into them further, you know. But then I don't know. Shout out my cousin Pookie and they be having the deals on the bud. No. Yeah, she talking about people <laughs> selling fish plates. People selling fish plates. They making the church fans. They do <laughs> Little man, man, hey, my sister just that made that my church fans nice. for me in Renton Park. <laughs> See? Those fans were nice, Alicia. <laughs> you, you like my church fans, girl? Yeah, they were nice. They you got, the, you got the, the pro way. Was it the pro hands on one side, Martin Luther King on the other side? No. <laughs> no, nah, Claire. My church fan <laughs> is a nice church fan. My cousin Peanut be selling them uh, food stamps. Uh, John Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> all right no I, I like i'm glad we I'm glad we talked about this man I'm glad we talked about this so this is 30 perspective we got los we got alicia miss new last name what's your new last name page alicia page then we got sherelle the unique i'm me mike 30 perspective let us know what you think like comment share Support black business, including uh, this one. If y'all have Ooh, any support. businesses that y'all want us to support or other people to support, list them down below so we can check them out. Yeah, so we can shout them out, check them out, see what's going on with them. Hit the so like, the other hit the subscribe can. button, hit the share. share button. Share it now. All right, we out of here. I have All a right. great night. You too. Yep. See you. We out. Yep.